Greetings from the far side of the galaxy, I'm Fury, your host most here with a swanky new idea. It came to me as I was poring over what to make for my next video. There are just so many manga in so little time, but then I had an idea. I could just cover them all quickly now and make those big videos later. So now you have this, 10 furry manga recommendations in roughly 10 minutes. Remember to like and subscribe, Kofi and Patreon, yada yada yada, now let's get going. This manga is a hidden gem that's absolutely beloved by those that have read it, and it's called Morris, The Adventures of the Horned Cat. Like the name implies, the entire manga is focused on the protagonist Morris, who has a pair of unsightly horns that he wants to get rid of. But Morris isn't the only cat with appendages he'd rather not have, so he joins Sensei and his fellow students to find a way to undo all of their curses. What attracted me most to the manga is the art style, which stands out for its Disney-esque and almost storybook-like style that is capable of being cute as it is capable of being creepy. The fact that the art can do both without ever changing is a testament to how beautiful it really is. The art fits the story, which itself is very fable-like, a coming-of-age tale following a fantastical protagonist in a fantastical world. And the author spends a lot of time fleshing out this world, dedicating almost an entire chapter to someone who's frankly not important. And you know what? It's probably my favorite chapter out of them all, and you're going to have to read the manga for yourself to find out why. Morris the Horned Cat is a finished manga with 21 chapters, and I super recommend you read it, but I do have to move on, we spent long enough on Morris as it is. Ramen Wolf and Curry Tiger is the next manga we're covering. It follows the exploits of two furry foodies, the titular Ramen Wolf, Mita Jiro, and the Curry Tiger, Yanagi Kagetora, as they go out to eat. The series isn't necessarily comedy-focused, but it does contain the odd joke here and there, but it's primarily slice of life. The idea of basing the story on eating works really well into the slice of life genre since there's a lot of ways you can spice up the plot eh, by changing location and context, like entering a food contest or eating at home because you're sick. The heart of the series is focused on character drama rather than telling jokes, and the character drama isn't that bad. The series makes heavy use of backstory to explain why characters act the way they are, and they are very good backstories. About halfway through, we learn how Jiro and Kagetora met, and it's genuinely an amazing flashback full of emotion. The series does have an official English release for you to buy, although I'm not sure if it's completed. The two volumes that are out tell a complete story, but I've heard rumors that the author is working on a third, but I haven't found anything conclusive myself. It's a really good series and huh? What's this? Someone already made an entire video talking about it and there's a link in the top right? Maybe you should go watch it, wink wink, but after this video though. Full disclosure, but the next manga is pretty much DOA. I'm not even sure if the author is still alive or not because the last post on their Twitter page is from four years ago. I don't know what's going on with them, but I hope it's not bad. That aside, the manga we're discussing today is Kainushi Jujin to Pet Josie Kose, also known as The Beastman's Pet High School Girl. Oh wow, that title makes this series sound way more messed up than it is. It's all about a high school girl named Leela who suddenly wakes up in the world of Beast and becomes the pet to Zenovi. The story blends their two perspectives together of Zenovi struggling to be a new pet owner and Leela who's stuck in this position of being a pet. It's very cute in its own weird way seeing Zenovi actually be a pet owner. And then there's some interesting world building going on where humans are kind of seen as livestock animals where it's not uncommon to eat them. So I suppose getting a pet human is a little like getting a pet chicken? I don't know, it just makes me wonder if we've ever seen Zenobi actually eating human but just not know. Okay, question for any viewer who owns livestock, have you ever eaten them in front of them? Like eating a burger in front of a cow or a chicken nugget in front of chickens? Either way, back to the manga. It's a pretty creative, pretty weird, pretty creepy if you think about it too much manga that I thoroughly enjoyed. I'm not sure what happened to the author, but I hope they're doing okay. The next manga is Dragon Yashinate Kudasai, also known as Please Look After the Dragon. Murakami is a simple college student with a super relatable problem. Every furry game he plays always has the characters transform into humans. 
But then, on his way home, Murakami runs into an actual dragon named Isela, who has traveled here from her home world to train and get stronger. Needing a place to stay, she asks if Murakami can take her in. Even if she may be a dragon who's so bad at magic, she can't even transform into a human. Of course, that's perfectly fine with Murakami. The entire series is all about the mishaps Murakami and Isela get into trying to hide the fact that she's a dragon. Sometimes it's helping Isela find a job, other times it's accidentally pissing off the local dragon god. The series started fairly recently, with the first chapter having only come out seven months ago, and it does update regularly, so it's one of my favorite manga to keep up with. So far, it's shaping up to be quite good, as a comedy with some thematic substance behind its characters and jokes that enrich the reading experience. The idea of working past your flaws despite your personality is one of the core parts of the manga. To change the pace of the video, the next manga we have isn't technically a manga, but a Korean manhwa, and it's called Miss Kitty and Her Bodyguards. The story is focused on a family that's akin to the Mafia, or maybe the Yakuza. Point is, the family's business is pretty shady, and little Anna will inherit it one day, so it's up to her bodyguards to make sure she can. It's got an ensemble cast, so for the sake of time, I'm not going to introduce all the characters, but I will say it's a series that bounces between cute slice of life to crime thriller quite well. The story goes from visiting a friend's family at their flower shop to dealing with weapons being smuggled out of a church back to back, and yet the transition is somehow smooth. And the writing for either parts doesn't suffer, the action and the levity hold up really well. The series is also pretty long, covering huge spans of time, and that means we actually get to see Anna slowly grow up and become older, and it's surprising how cool that is to watch. Although, the length and the ensemble cast means that this series is hard to put down and pick back up because you're going to forget a lot of things. The point remains that it's still a pretty good story, even if it's not the easiest to get into. It's still ongoing, so this might be a nice series to catch up with if you don't mind waiting for updates. Up next is The Masterful Cat is Depressed Again Today. Some of you may recognize the title of this manga if you've watched this video, which you should totally watch after this one. The story follows Saku Fukuzawa, who on the surface is a super competent and awesome businesswoman, but in reality is a lazy mistake of a person. The only reason she can keep herself together is thanks to her masterful cat, Yukichi. It's a very cute series that revels in its concept, showing all the ways Fukuzawa is a mess while also reminding us of why Yukichi stays with her through flashbacks. The manga is of course further ahead of the anime, meaning you get more content and avoid the flaws unique to the show. Rereading, I'm reminded just how genuinely funny the manga is, following the mishaps of these two characters as they narrowly manage to save the day. Like watching Yukichi be so competent he unintentionally causes rumors to start flying. Or those rare moments when Fukuzawa is competent and manages to show up Yukichi. It's one of those series I forget about until it gets an update and then I'm just reminded why I love it all over again. The Masterful Cat is Depressed Again Today does actually have a physical release, so do feel free to try and find it in your local store. The next manga we're covering is one that finished a while ago, and it's called Hedgehog Harry. It's a four coma, i.e. four panel, comic series all about the titular hedgehog named Harry who just wants to get some hugs. He's joined by two others in his hug-based escapades, Peta, the penguin who ironically wants to learn how to fly, and Garu, the wolf who looks mean but is actually kind of nice. The series is a slice-of-life comedy, however, it's refreshing in its nature due to being focused more on fluffy, feel-good stuff rather than slapstick. Hedgehog Harry is funny because of good people getting into accidental mishaps. It makes for a nice and short, easy read that you can totally knock out in a day. And that's despite being like 300 or so chapters. Remember, this is a four coma comic, so all of the chapters are basically one page, making this entire manga the equivalent of about three volumes. Rereading the manga for this video actually takes me way back because I remember reading this in high school and enjoying the hell out of it. The next manga we have is a very popular one, so popular it's in Shonen Jump, and it's called Ruri Dragon. The manga actually started years ago, but went on a long hiatus due to the author's health, but it's back in full bloom now. The manga follows the life of Ruri, a high school student who suddenly grows horns, but don't worry, her mom knows exactly why. 
It's because her mom is a human and her dad is a dragon, but they can't let that or her horn stop her from going to school and living a normal life. And it's Ruri's attempts at living a normal life that are the focus of the manga. Stuff like Ruri learning how to make friends and get more involved with the school, Dragon Powers Be Damned, and it tells quite the good coming-of-age story. One thing I find cool is how Ruri being half-dragon is like a special spice rather than the focus. Being half-dragon isn't the problem, it's her overly introverted personality that is. Being part dragon is just the crux that gets her out of her usual habits. It creates an oddly relatable story that I super recommend you read. And if you're still on the fence about reading the manga, maybe you can watch this super cool and mega fudgy awesome video someone, I'm not saying me, made. The next manga we have is Shoujo Romance, and it's simply called Odette. It's a manga about a woman named Taie and her cat boyfriend. I say cat boyfriend because I genuinely don't think he has a name. I reread the entire manga and I genuinely don't think he's ever given one. The girl's name is Mizoguchi Taie, so for all I know, maybe his name is Odette. The manga doesn't have an overarching plot. Instead, chapter by chapter, you follow this boyfriend and girlfriend as they do things. Sometimes it's going out to eat. Other times it's hanging out with a third friend. And other times still, it's going to the movies. Because there's no continuous story, it kind of makes the manga feel vapid in a sense, but at the same time, it's super easy to pick up and put down. Sometimes, when I find myself having downtime, I just read a random chapter just as a nice way to kill some time. That's helped by the fact that the individual chapters are pretty good, with a ton of nice fluffy stories that feel different from one another. If you're in the mood for some nice, soft shoujo romance, go give this one a read. For this final manga, I'm gonna ask if you've heard of this lesser known series called My Hero Academia. Yeah, it's a pretty small thing about superheroes or something, but this manga was actually made by the same guy, Koei Horikoshi, and was published in Shonen Jump before it got canned. It had a sizable 38 chapters, so it's still quite the full read, and it's called Omagadoki Zoo. The manga follows the clumsy, animal-loving human Hana Aoi, who gets a job at the titular Omagadoki Zoo, which is secretly cursed. At night, all the animals transform into humans at the behest of their director, who's been cursed into a hybrid furry form. It's like Night at the Museum, but, you know, for furries. And the only way to lift the curse is to make the zoo the most popular one in the world. The manga itself is honestly nothing special, walking through tried and true shonen cliches, but those cliches are cliché for reasons, so it's still enjoyable. The art is still as good as it ever was and kind of makes me want to get back into my hero again, especially for the action. The thing that honestly stood out to me most is that this is a shonen action manga with like a really good female protagonist, certainly an oddball in that regard. I'm kind of sad Omegadoki Zoo got cancelled, but it manages to be a short and simple story made by one of the most popular shonen authors of all time. It's interesting to see how he's grown and what has been lifted from this previous work. You know Gang Orca? His design actually originates from Omegadoki Zoo. Even if you're not a furry and just a fan of My Hero, I totally recommend you read it. Now that the video's done, why don't we move on to our Patreon shoutouts. For our three stars, we have special thanks to 87 Werehog, Garen LeFay, Zora Chow, and Marvonla. For four stars, we have Miko, the Pure Beast. And for our Super D Duper special five star shoutouts, we have... First, Vanilla Flower, in the Fires of Daybreak. Second, Spidey Zack, the Queen of Kabukicho. Then, the good old days, the distant paper plane. Followed by Hodari Lion, the Throne of Slumber. Next, Sky King 64, the player's guide. And finally, Mahogasaur, the theme of the month. Thank you for watching. Do be sure to like and subscribe and check out my Kofi and Patreon. As always, I'm your host Fury, signing out.